you know, nutrition is just a gateway to helping somebody change their lives as far as I'm concerned. And it's all mindset related when you're talking about people who are struggling with dieting. You get these some clients who, hey, they want to gain weight, they want to put on muscle or whatever. Performance athletes, it's a different thing. But the average person wants to lose weight. There is a history. There is a reason they're eating that way. There's a reason that they have difficulty with it. So there's a lot of conversation. It's definitely more counseling when I'm doing check-in calls than just talking about macros and food quality and stuff like that. You're listening to the Building Men Podcast with Dennis and Anthony Miralda, brothers on a mission to help you become the strongest version of yourself mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. What's up, bro? What up? So we just uh, we have our second guest in so studio gonna, today. Love having guests in studio. It's a oh, yeah. big difference rather than dealing with the bullshit via Zoom. Um, so we just had Jonathan Matthew in studio. We'll have a second episode of him coming up mm-hmm. eventually. It was really cool talking to him. Um, but I gotta ask you first. He was he looked at me a lot. Like where we're situated in the studio, I'm facing the guest. Yeah. He winked a couple times. He did wink. Um, at, at me and inadvertently, it was just like a little like uh, as he was saying something, a little wink. And he was a brilliant, dude. Yeah, Fuck, very I, well I spoken. learned so much. Yeah, that I and I didn't even know where we were gonna go down the the path that we went down. But he winked at me a couple times. Yeah, so what I do, think I, it was like um, a Vince Vaughn type wink. You know, Vince Vaughn just sort of like a yeah. sentence enhancer, he just sort of tossed the like wink your way, and just like, hey, let's I'll just slap that onto the end of it. You know, a little exclamation point for you. It, and he, there were a couple times that he did it. In, in the middle of what he was doing, and there was a wink, and I kind of like the first time. Are you getting really, excited? I mean, it's working. It, you know, I feel like. Well, I'm talking about it right now. So what, yeah. Maybe that was his goal. Was I mean, he was asking about you before he came on. It's like leaving something at someone's apartment that you mm. hang out with, just so you get that call back to go get whatever it is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You've done that before. That's a great move. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any other moves like, like that? Oh that you my god, I can't believe that I left that there. It's terrible. I guess I'll have to come back. Yeah. I mean, what was it? What was it? Was there something in particular? Did you have your thing that you would leave at someone's apartment? Was it? Uh, your... It's usually a hat because okay. that's really easy to leave, and I'll put it somewhere so that I know that they're not gonna like find it before right. I leave. <laughs> you know, I have to like make sure it's in like the bathroom, they're in like, the crisper drawer on the refrigerator. Fuck yeah! Why is this <laughs> in my microwave? I'm like, oh my god! I'm so uh, stupid. What the fuck am I doing? I can't believe I did that again. I guess I'll have to come back. How about like Friday night or something? And you know. Bring over some wine. It'll be great. <laughs> so that's your room. Yeah. hat. Yeah. Interesting. I know. I was never in the dating world that that was something that I did. You know, mm-hmm. I went from, I didn't go on a ton of dates after my divorce. So it wasn't like a, a thing that I even thought about. I'm really interested yeah. in that. If there's, uh, were there any other moves like that? That like to dating get you moves? Back with I, don't I don't know. Just like a, in the dating world today. Like, is there a move that people do? I, I don't that's know if there's a move. Question. I just feel like there's just... Honestly, just being, like, direct with people and just telling them what, like, so many people are trying to, like, dance around and, like, basically vomiting out what they think this person wants them to be. Right. I'm just, like, I'm living at home with my parents. I have no job. <laughs> and I really like to have sex tonight. So, and they're like, oh, hi. My name's Samantha. That's great. Let's go. <laughs> I've, I have seven tubs of peanut butter in the back of yeah. my car. Don't ask me why That's right. There. I have a dog and a lot of peanut butter and... We meet three times a week. New, peanut butter is nutritious, right? So we're going to segue into our guest. There's a little, little protein so there. So our, our guest in studio today is Jimmy Hallinan. Hallinan, I got it. Hallinan. Cool hand. <laughs> and um, on Instagram, he goes by Jimmy Nutrition. He is, um, he's a coach, he's a teacher, um, and he works with, with people in the physical fitness space as well. So Jimmy, welcome to the studio, man. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it's nice it, being dude. here in person. So I've, I didn't get the flannel memo. I didn't get the... No. Damn it. I feel like we could have done a whole thing here. We could have done a, a I also feel like thing. Jimmy has a very strong chin. Ridiculous. I, right? I had, a, I had to think about whether I should shave or not because I've had the beard going for a little bit. I was like, do I want to be complimented for my beard? But then there'd be three beards. Right. And so I ended up shaving. Yeah, just no, because it's of this. striking. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a good, you could it's, cut paper with that. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's like it made out of marble. I don't have that chin. Well, the, it's, it's like, a, like a crack. Like it's like a crater, not just a butt chin mm. as well. In terms, of, It's like a bullet hole going on. I like that, yeah. yeah. So um, you're, we got introduced through uh, Brian Panuzzo, who was on the podcast. He's the, the fan of, um, you know, the Scented Pumpkin world. He talked to us a lot about that. Mm-hmm. And um, 
he introduced us together. So you and I get on to a Zoom call. We started bullshitting for a little bit. And so you are a South Jersey guy yeah. um, and you're a teacher. So talk to us a little bit about your journey, your decision to become a teacher. We, we were both teachers. We were both coaches. And that's the world that you live in. So talk to us about why you went in that direction. Yeah. I, I always knew I wanted to teach. Like when I was in high school, I worked in um, with youth groups and always just kind of pictured myself continuing to work with high school students and wanted to teach. I thought I wanted to teach history, but I knew I did not want to study history. So I'm like, I'm going to go for phys ed. And uh, everybody said, don't go for phys ed. You're not going to get a job. Phys ed's going to be getting cut, um, blah, blah, blah. And in my head, it was always, if this is what I want to do, this is what I'm going to pursue and do. And uh, so, yeah, so I went for health and phys ed. And I worked at LA Fitness as a personal trainer and was uh, an assistant manager in the training department, was doing that stuff uh, my senior year, and then got in a car and moved out to San Diego right after I graduated with a friend from high school who were just acquaintances, ran into each other one night. He said, he's moving to San Diego. Do you want to go? I didn't even have the guy's phone number. This is like pre-nationwide calling. I think Sprint was like the only one that had <laughs> nationwide calling. It was like you had your regional cell phone. And uh, yeah, so we got in a car and moved out to California. It was nice living out there for a few months, lived in San Diego. But I guess it's the East Coast side of me that... I could, after a few months, I'm like, I want, uh, I do want a job. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to miss this opportunity, but I do want a job. Started looking for teaching jobs outside of uh, LA and San Diego, and nothing. Um, and then got a call to come back home for teaching. I said, I don't want to fly home just for an interview. They, uh, they said, if you're interested in moving back, it will be worth flying home for the interview. So I, I knew that I had the job. Um, so yeah, flew home for the inter interview, got the job, flew back, got my car, drove home, and 21 years later, I'm <laughs> sitting here. So yeah. The um. Interesting, the different dynamic between East and West Coast. I remember I was out on the West Coast um, 2003. It was when Petco Park opened um, okay. in San Diego yeah. where the Padres play. And just such a different vibe, you know, such a different vibe from, you know, all the different areas of the country. A lot of the yeah. men that we've talked to, just the, the vibe that happened. So you, you weren't there for a long period of time. No. And but I remember when we were out there, my friend's uncle was visiting, and he's like, don't get soft. Don't get soft, like this South Philly guy. Don't get soft. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And uh, my first time being back and being out at a bar in Philly, I knew exactly what he was talking about. You know, being out there, you bump into somebody. I could bump into you at a bar. You're apologizing in San Diego and offering to buy me a drink. Yeah. You know, somebody bumps into me in Philly at a bar, and it's like, oh, God. Uh, go. Apparently, it was my fault. This might be a fight. Yeah. Uh, so I understood. Like, I felt timid being out after spending a few months out there. I mean, we, somebody let us sleep on their couch for three weeks when we got there. We didn't know anybody. We slept on their couch for three weeks, and they're like, our well, roommate's moving out. You guys can move in. We're like, sure. And just That wouldn't probably happen around here. Was there anything that you needed to do in return? I mean, was there peanut butter involved in that situation? <laughs> There's you know, a lot of peanut couch. butter. <laughs> lot. Yeah. Always a lot of peanut butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. No, no, nothing. We just kind of cleaned up around the house and cooked the meals and stuff like that. But, yeah, no no peanut butter. <laughs> so your um, teacher prep program for becoming a health and phys physical education teacher. And in your job right now, are you do you split both? Do you do some health work, some physical education work? Yeah, so my first seven years, I just taught driver's ed. Okay. And at our school, it's That's big. That's scary. Scary yeah, well, spot. it was just in the classroom. Okay. But then I did start doing that as a as a part time job, and then started running their behind the wheel driving program with the thought maybe one day I'll start my own. And then I started my own. Uh, that was 13 years ago. So I actually own a driving school uh, in in our town, and it's a good, busy, well known driving school. So it's successful. Um, and then I started doing health and phys ed 10th grade. And then the last five years, it's been health and phys ed for seniors. What's the craziest driver's ed story? Was there one where somebody ran up on the curb, two wheels? It's almost like, yes. what was the movie uh, with, um, it was like Corey License Hain to Drive. Right? License to Drive, yes. Yes. Great call. <laughs> yeah, Mercedes was the I, girl's I, name. I, in every, that every guy our age had a fucking crush on Mercedes. I know she I did. My best. God, she absolutely was. She was the best. It's like on Teen Beat Magazine. It was like Corey Haim, Corey, Corey Feldman, and then yes. Mercedes was the girl. Yep. Samantha Fox, Alyssa Milano. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> But yes, I have ended up on a front yard of somebody's house. I was driving uh, this girl, and, and she had other instructors for her first couple hours. We were doing like one-hour lessons with this driving school I started with. So it's her third hour. They have not left the development by this point. They're typically like on the highway or something. And uh, she panics at high speeds, which 15 miles an hour, I found out, was a high speed. We're in this development. She's making a right turn, panics, death grips the wheel, and floors it. So now we're basically doing a U-turn because she, she's not letting the wheel come back up the curb, I hit the brake, 
I'm telling her to break. I'm like, break, break, break. She's like, I am breaking. I'm like, stop breaking, stop breaking. <laughs> because she wasn't breaking. She had her foot on the gas. And my brake's not going to stop the car if she's on the gas. So the car stops. And we're probably 10 feet from the front door of this wow. house. And I'm super calm with all this stuff. I'm like, OK. I put the car in park. I'm like, we're just going to switch seats. And uh, I'll just back us out of here. And I back out and drive off. It was like the movie Vanilla Sky. That's all I could think. Not a person in sight. Nobody came out of the house. There was like no damage on, the, on anything. I checked the car. The scariest part for me was when I asked her, are you okay? And she's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm like, this is a problem. Like, you should be crying at this point. You sh she's like, no, I'm fine. I'm like, this is, oh, this is a psychopathic uh, <laughs> uh, area we're at right now. So that was probably one of those, uh, like, scary type moments. And then I did, the worst drive I ever had was a guy who was just absolutely awful. And he knows it. Like, he knew it. It was terrible. I had to tell him every time, you got to be in the left lane to make a left turn. I mean, ever, we're missing turns because he just wouldn't change lanes. We spent about 40 minutes just making lefts at lights. I'm like, it's a green area. You can go. Can I go? Yes. You're the only one that could go. <laughs> we're getting honked at. In fact, no one else can go no except one else. for you. And, and th this is how off he was. He was like a smart kid in school. And uh, he's like, what are all these cones for as we're driving? I'm like, we're, we're in a construction site. Like you see like the do not enter sign? What are you talking about? What are the cones for? We're yeah. in a construction site. It's saying do not enter and you're, you don't know what the cones are here for. Uh, just no clue whatsoever. No clue whatsoever. So he, he, that's the one where you're like, I need a drink. Like now I understand yeah. why people need a drink after these lessons. Those are the worst ones where you're just like, I don't know how else to explain how to turn a wheel. Yeah, you can only be but, so patient with someone until yeah. you're like, you're just dumb and yeah. I can't deal with yeah. you right now. If they're bad, they usually they'll figure it out. But then there's those ones that are mm -hmm. bad and just like, I don't know how else to explain this. Yeah. But it's not bad. You, get, you start to trust yourself. You got a break. It's, it's not a bad gig. I don't really do much of it anymore. I got all the employees drive. The, um, <laughs> they were what? cones. <laughs> That's our. I, I knew you were going to say it. I wanted to say it because it's awesome. I was like, what's his name in Wedding Singer? Adam Sandler's best friend. It was like the Michael Jackson, Vinnie Barbarino. <laughs> I know. He was, <laughs> they were cones. <laughs> they were cones. <laughs> so this is this is the first time I'll tell this story I'm building, man. Ooh. So I feel honored. My uh, 17 years old, my birthday is December 2nd, 1976. Go for my driver's test, right? And so... I had a 1983 Monte Carlo. It was my that was my ride. Small car. Uh, it was uh, it was a, <laughs> and then it, I have a great story because it, it went from being black yeah. to being Campbell soup can red. Um, hot after lips. a crazy hot story, lips hot red. lips red. <laughs> great, I love that you remember that. I know. So like mom takes me for my driver's test. It was near Rawway Prison. Yeah. Right. So that's yep. right in the backdrop of where the where the driver's test was, and it was almost like. License to drive a big black dude gets in. It was not the coffee cup, but in the movie, he puts the coffee yes. cup up on the dashboard. And don't it, make it spill. Don't make it spill <laughs> at the end. But so we go around, and I remember you had to do the parking on the hill. It was like perk and sled. It was like park, emergency brake, turn the wheel to the right, turn off the key, then start the car, turn the wheel to the left, um, turn off the emergency brake, put it in drive. I still remember that. Um, but that was what I needed to do. So I parked on the hill, there. but I, when I was leaving, I forgot to take off the emergency brake. So now I, I'm, I start driving. I didn't take off the emergency brake. And now I'm, I'm going to where we're about to parallel park. And he's like, stop the car. And he's like, your emergency brake is still on. It's like, and I'm like, fuck. Because I knew like two things and you're done, right? Yeah. So now like my heart starts beating. My hands are shaking a little bit. So we go to, to parallel park. And I remember I went and I got in. But it was like, I was like a 13 inches away, 14 inches away. He opens the door and he goes, do it again. And now I was like, that was it. I was done. Done after that. So now I go to pull out. And as I do, I touch the cone a little bit. Done. So now I hit a car. I'm I, done. And now I'm trying to parallel park from there. So I go to back in. I knock over that cone. Drive over the fucking back cone. There's like cones everywhere. There are fucking cones it's underneath the car. So basically, <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> then from that point, I'm like, I'm just going to go Six hunt down women news. and children with this <laughs> fucking Monte Carlo. Fuck it. Fuck it. Start like mowing down people. So I wound up failing my driver's test the first Loser. time I took it. It was horrible. Loser. And I remember my friends were counting on me Loser. to hang out that night. I was like, it was one of the most demoralizing experiences. I remember getting back into the car and... I knew that I failed, and he's like, all right, you're going to have to reschedule. I'm like, wait, I failed? He looked over at me like I was the dumbest motherfucker in the world. He's like, are you serious? He's like, you failed everything. You have pretty much failed Sir, everything. There is not one thing you didn't <laughs> you fail. not allowed on Everything that came out of your – we are now dumber. <laughs> <laughs> the but world is worse because – We literally – we lived so <laughs> as – 
as a kid younger than him, I lived off that story. And when I passed my driver's test on the oh, first time around, it was like, because Dennis is, you know, the almighty, all powerful Dennis. It was like, you know, Anthony, Dennis failed it. <laughs> Dennis failed his when he did his license and you did not I'm like, yeah, like the one thing that I had, I was like, fuck, yeah. I lived off that for a very long time. And you thought you were taller than me until Jonathan Matthew came into the studio <sighs> today know, and he said, son of a Dennis, bitch. you're taller than your brother. I know. I also, he was winking at you. I think there's more to that Definitely. than just there's the hug going on. He gave me a hug. He did a little, there was a little, a little like, taint tickle. Yeah. Tickle. Little. So, <laughs> he went both hands under. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He gave the old. I was like, how are you picking me <laughs> up right class? now? Yeah. Like, Ooh, John. Chaz Michael, uh, yeah. <laughs> what's his name? Murray. Uh, no, from um, Chaz Michael played, Michael. Was it Chaz yeah, Michael Michael? Chaz Jimmy, Mike. Jimmy McElroy, Jill Chaz McElroy, Michael, Michael. Chaz Michael Michael. Yeah. Chaz, yeah. yeah. So uh, he did that move on me. So anyway, we, <laughs> we're, we're <laughs> he didn't just didn't for the. Oh, he really didn't. But Dennis wants you to I if you're listening. listening John. Next time, do that move. So we're we leave. Mom is like so. She's so sad for me. You know, I could just feel the level of empathy that she had for me. She's like. Let's go to the mall. I'll buy you whatever you want. We were by the Woodbridge Mall as we were driving home. I'll buy you whatever you want. I was like, I just want to go home and cry right now. I just wanted to duck my head into the pillow. So second time I went through, I passed the test. Everything was good. But that was a moment that I'll never forget. Yeah. Definitely a traumatic experience when I recognizing that I didn't take off the emergency brake. I feel like if I would have taken off the emergency brake, I would have been able to do it. But once it got into my head that there was a possibility yeah. – that I didn't have that safety blanket of the second thing, that was it. I'm yeah. reaping I, all the benefits. <laughs> I'm just here. standing in the Ladies, corner. It's not a sock in my garage. <laughs> what is it? It's from Wedding Singer. Yeah, the when same the guy's thing. sitting there, yeah, yep. <laughs> they're yep. just looking at it. It was John Lithgow that <laughs> yeah. was like, <laughs> and I'm reaping all the benefits <laughs> creepily sitting in the corner. Oh, what a nut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh fuck! All okay. right, so the driver's anyway. thing. We we go off the rail here. Like I said, there's no fucking script in what we're doing. But now I want to talk to you about. So you didn't plan on talking about driving for ten? <laughs> no, at, at least I, I figured. Usually we talk to people. Quote about driving. wedding singer. Right. We talk driving drivers ed, to every guest. That's right. what. But yeah, that's four probably minutes is our, is right. our limit. So, dri- uh, physical education preparatory program, health physical education. I ran into um, a gym teacher who worked for me when I was a principal on the Jersey Shore. I saw him on Sunday in Philly. Uh, we were at the uh, German Christmas mm-hmm. thing before we went to Monks. Yeah. And um, Monks, shout out to us if you want to become a sponsor of the Billy Man Podcast. But uh, anyway, it, we were we, we were there, and I run into Don Nolan. He's like six eight. He was you could see him from across the sixty year old gym teacher. Really good dude. Old school gym teacher, really yeah. old school gym teacher. And so I remember I would go in to observe him, right? And, you know, you're going to observe, you know, they were doing some, you know, some spike ball that they were doing or whatever the yeah. game that they were doing. And you, you could give some feedback here and there. He's like, listen, I don't, sign, I'll sign where you want me to sign. I don't yeah. give a shit. Like, I'm not going to differentiate instruction to this degree or that degree. So we would come up with these ideas. Okay, well, what are certain things that they should have taught you to become this – you know, gym teacher, this pinnacle of gym teachers that is of in New, 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 the state of New Jersey. So we had a couple of thoughts, and one was the countdown. You know, depending on the game that you're playing, you know, the underdog has a shot to win the game. So okay. you're playing whatever, uh, whatever game is. You're playing basketball. Yeah. The underdog, they're down by a bucket, and you know that it's the class is almost over. You have you know short time left before the kids have to get changed. You have to do this countdown, right? So you want to give the underdog a chance to win the game. So the countdown when the underdog has the ball, it's five, four. And it's a really slow, dramatic yeah, countdown. Yeah, yeah. But if the winning team has the ball, it's like you want it to be Correct. done as quickly as you can. So we said there needs to be a class on how do you appropriately do that countdown. That's countdown. like a big a big countdown. I tell the kids we had, we had a class on how to twirl the – the, the the string with the whistle and the keys. That's important. Like it's yeah. a whole class. It was a whole semester on how to do this without because injuring it, it, anybody. Because it's an art. Yeah. yeah. By the time you get to the end, there's like a thwap. Like, yes. Yeah. Once you get to the end, and then as soon as you do it, it goes back in the other direction just yeah. as fast. You have to do it in the right direction so it lands in your palm. You can't. It's, it's more skill to it than people think. <laughs> It rem- looks so natural. <laughs> I remember yeah. my gym teacher in high school. We were playing badminton, and it was me and my other friend, and we were just smoking everyone and. And we were doing these tournaments, and we were winning every single one. So he comes up, and he goes, do you think you guys are good? He's like, let's play. And I was like, all right, who are you going to play with? He was like, nobody. He's like, let's go, and the whole class is watching now. And he smoked us, smoked us, like mopped us up. It was the most embarrassing thing ever. We didn't get one point on him, and he was running. He was probably like 61 
and we're both 17 years old, winded from badminton, and literally yeah. got destroyed by him. It's <laughs> funny, like, thinking it, like, I, I had a gym teacher when I was in high school where he was, like, the super competitive gym teacher. I hated him. And I even said to him, like, he would be the teacher. He was good at basketball. He's calling fouls if he missed. He would, like, hack you, and it's like, no, whatever. He'd be calling traveling. It's like, <laughs> these kids are in ninth grade. Like, let it it's go. It's legal screen. Yeah. yeah. And I remember saying to him, uh, what did it take you, like, two years to get a degree? Or two, two weeks to get a degree in phys ed? <laughs> like, fast forward, then fast forward, I become a gym teacher. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Uh, There's your college, mentor, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did have a college professor, this music teacher that we had to take. She was like, well, you know what, because we always, she took the class way too serious. It was for non-majors. And, uh, and she goes, you know what they say, those who can't do, teach. Those who can't teach, teach gym. Yep. I was like, I, and I go, that explains why you're a teacher. Because she's a failed musician, I guess. But right. that was my implication. <laughs> but uh, but I was like, that's messed up. Yeah. Some of these people, but yeah, it's a good gig. And, and I remember back to my own experience in school, and I had, you name it, I, I remember in middle school, I had Mr. Gabauer was the gym teacher, and elementary school was Mr. Yusenko, Bob Yusenko. Yusenko. God. Um, and that's when we, you have to climb the rope in gym yeah, class. Yeah. You know, that, that whole thing happened. Worst. But he, wherever you buy, I don't know if, we, if you still, if this is still out there, but um, he, his was the high white socks, uh, and the stripe on the socks matched the color of the gym shorts. He the had canvas a, shorts, the, the canvas the, baseball coach absolutely, gym shorts. Absolutely, <laughs> but they were so short. <laughs> yeah. And I remember, like, they Mr. Yusenko so had a – he was packing some heat. Yeah. I remember I was ball, like, should I be thinking ball, that was about all I this remember. right now? Yeah. So confused, I'm climbing this rope. I'm and a child, a... and I'm confused, <laughs> and there's just so much. He had a Chia pet – Hair oh, butt. the perm. Like a, a perm, that like a in. red those, perm. Like, glasses. Remember, they were like this big. They were uh, huge glasses, yeah. like um, like a women, a woman uh, reporter they were on like the news clear from 1987. Almost clear yeah. aviators that were like thick as fuck. And then he had his watch that he would wear on the inside of his wrist. Uh, so he turned to it like and look at his watch like this, and it was just so. I was so fucking scared of him. <laughs> He made me I forgot very that nervous. you had him for a really short period of time. Yeah. What did you have him for like kindergarten or first grade before yeah. we moved? That's right. That's wild. So his, I still remember just any. It was a polo shirt, um, tight. Really, he was in good shape. <sighs> but yeah. the and I remember he had like a pair of like maroon, like baseball short shorts. Really, really short. Um, man, <laughs> wait. I feel like so you're getting pretty excited right I now. Know, talking so about Dennis, it. So clearly, like, there's some trauma that we need to unpack here. At me. Don't you fucking yeah. dare Dude, start. I'm just thinking. Why are you touching my thigh? How are you reaching me from that far away? <laughs> the gym teachers that I've had growing up, there was one in elementary school. I'm not going to say her name. I don't know where she is now, but she's listening. Yeah, I'm I'm sure she is. She would on her birthdays, she would go around and be like, "I heard it's Samantha's birthday today." And then Samantha would get up and start screaming and run around the gym. She would chase them, and then she would spank them over her leg. However old they were, I swear. And this is not a Catholic school. Oh, no. No, no, no. (laughs) Dude. This is at Millstone? Oh, yeah. This is at Millstone Elementary School. She would spank them in front of the class, and it would be like, oh, my God, Samantha, start running. She would run. This lady would chase them. It was a woman, too, and would spank them in front of the whole class. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Was she fast? I mean, could somebody get away from her potentially? She was Did you a, have a unit. Chance? Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a shot to get away? No, from her? dude. She, track it wasn't athlete. like duck, 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 goose. Like if you made it around the circle. She just stood there until you tired out. <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> waited. She, she knew what it was like. A... She, was in, she did the marathon training just for the spanking yes. in yeah, class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Wow, that's crazy. I never heard that story. Yeah, no, I know. I haven't told How old is she that? I, I don't know. I don't know. She's I wonder be... where we could visit her in jail right Let's now. Let's find her on Facebook right now and send her a message. Yeah, that's there's a wild. lot of things to unpack there. I'm sure that's why a lot of my things that came up now are all this the spanking shit that you're into now. That right? I, I know. I was, you know, it all makes sense now. <laughs> Such a large why population of spank me kids yeah. that were into spanking, S and M, that whole stuff. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So so gym teachers. Right. So now <laughs> move into. Um, so you're working in a, in a school district right now. I mean, I've obviously have had a lot of criticism around school districts. Um, you know, things that we could be doing better. I'm not yeah. going to put you in a spot to say, like, okay, per, you know, what do you want to change? But perfect world for you. How would – what things might schools um, incorporate into what they're doing to make it more of a worthwhile experience for kids, especially in high school right now? I was just having the conversation today. I think there needs to be, like, a state law banning phones. You, the schools are not going to be able to implement, like, banning phones. Parents are going to argue. They're going to say they need access. Yep. They're still going to be using them. Um, but that's the biggest dis- disruption – to the educational process. You know, we talk about, hey, you have free speech, but if it if your free speech disrupts the educational process, you can't 
just say whatever the hell yep. you want. But that, that stuff needs to go. It's just it's the cause of all the problems. Them taking pictures of each other in the hallway, you know, posting things about each other, all that drama that goes on. I feel like just even if that would ever happen, like you don't get your license if you get caught three times with a yeah. phone in middle school or leading up to it or like literally some kind of a legal consequence. Um, otherwise, I don't see that going away. Um, and that it's just it's so difficult to even get them to be engaged because they're so tied to the phone, they don't even know how to engage. So it, nowadays, it, the, the kids that do make eye contact or can have a conversation or do engage, it really does stand out. Yeah. It used to be the students that were the problem, that 20% of the students that caused 80% of the problems, that they were the ones that stood out. Now it's like the ones that are actually normal. I don't, I don't want to say, I mean, whatever, sociable in some, yeah. in, in real life is nice. But in terms of what they can do fundamentally to make things better. I don't know if anything that would be ideal would ever actually happen. You know, I don't, I don't see, you know, you look at the way like acting academies yeah. are run and stuff like that. I just can't see that actually being realistic in the public school setting, you know? So I don't know. I don't know what they could do. Different. Right. It's such a shame. It really is. That that's what it's come to, you know? I mean, there's like no consequences yeah. for stuff. That That's a, a, a big thing too. I mean, be before you didn't, you lost a book. You didn't pay a book fine. You didn't pay your lunch dues. You couldn't walk in graduation. Now it's like, no, you can't. I mean, we had a kid that was sus that was expelled from school because of all his discipline problems. Still lawyered up and went on senior trip. I mean, there's just no, you're expelled. You don't even go to school anymore. And they lawyered up and went on senior trip. There's just no consequences. You know, the power is, it's like the adults have kids' rights and the kids have adult rights is how it feels. You know, you got to watch everything you say, da -da -da, but they can say whatever they want, do whatever they want. I remember the fear of getting in trouble. Yeah. Um, not only from the school's perspective, but if, if my parents found out or something that, that, that happened, the wrath that was that I was going. And I was a good kid. I didn't really do anything wrong in school. I mean, I would get in trouble from here. Because you had the fear. I, there was that fear <laughs> of one. I mean, imagine if I was sent down to, to Mr. Widra's office when I was in seventh grade. I remember how nervous I would have been. Now the kids walk in and they're like, you know, call my mom and then call, yeah. you know my mom's lawyer and yeah. we'll take care of this. I'll yeah, get we'll back in the class. We'll see what's going on. Yep. I talked to, I would talk to parents a lot about let the kid experience that situation. Let them deal with the consequence. Even if philosophically it's like, well, you know, maybe the teacher was wrong in the situation. Let them see that there was something that happened that they did something wrong and there's going to be a level of consequence for that. So they don't, go out into the world and become a huge asshole. Yeah. You know, basically, like, let them go through the struggle now so we're not creating an asshole when they're 25 years old, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the being the, you can't be the hero and you can't be the villain in this. Like, you can't just constantly shit on your kids, but you also can't save them from every situation. Yeah. You're doing a disservice to them when you don't allow them to go through this. You yeah. Know? I mean, that's how resilience is built. You yeah. know, you're not, we're going to have just a huge problem with resilience and character and all that when there's just no consequences to anything. When we would have a situation come up before a trip, as a, as a principal, we would go, I would take the seventh grade on a three-day, two-night camping trip. No phones were allowed on that trip whatsoever. I remember all, and this is going back, I started taking the kids on the trips, the trips in 2005 before phones were a part yeah. of education. And then through my experience as an administrator, when I would tell parents, the kids are not allowed to have phones, I would get so much pushback. What do you mean? How can I, you know, I'm not going to be able to get in touch with Samantha? I no, it's okay. She's she's 13. She can survive for three days with supervision. Reach out to me, and I'll be able to get in touch with you or her if, if necessary. And that was something that I held a line on. And I remember it was one of those things that this is this is a cross I will I will stake myself on. I'm I'm okay with doing this because I don't want that you know asshole kids. I don't I don't want that to be a part of my legacy as an administrator. But it is. Not everyone is ready for that battle. It is an uphill battle. And it is something that we need to be able to show kids, like, you need to be able to communicate. You need to build relationships. And not enough of that goes on in education. Yeah. Today, today I watched a girl, I think she was a freshman, uh, to the bathroom. And the teacher's like, yeah, what about it? <laughs> like, that's how, like, they ask the bathroom. question. Can uh, I go there? Yeah, she's like, can I go? He's like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> it's just, well, <sighs> bathroom. Bathroom. That's B to know. BRB. Like, <laughs> yeah. Be right back. Yeah. Fucking bathroom. Yep. It, it's just, it's so sad to, I mean, it's just, it's so, there's no accountability at all. And like, there's this undeserved sense of entitlement that all these kids would walk in when I was working at the gym and working as a health teacher too. It was like, if I held them accountable, I would get an email from 
their guidance counselor and the parent that I was being mean to them because I asked them why they were late. Yeah. I'm like, why are you late? They're like, what do you, what do you mean? I was like, you're late. Why? And they're like, I, I don't know. Wait, wait. And then they would start getting defensive and then they would get mad. I was like, you don't have to yell. I'm just asking you a question right now. Yeah. And just from that moment itself, I was being too harsh. Yeah. I'm like, okay, so then show up on time. Like, I don't think I'm being crazy by asking for this. And it's like, I'm getting shit on for just calling these kids out because never in their lives has anyone done that. And it's like, how are we helping them for the real world? Because at some point that's going to happen and it's going to be outside of school and there's going to be a lot more consequences. Yeah. And I think the balance there is holding the kids accountable, making sure there's logical consequences for whatever the situation and allowing them the opportunity to voice their opinion and be assertive, but in a way that's appropriate within a conversation. Yeah. Not like that, what do you mean, why am I late? You know, like pushing back in that way, being a dick about it, but being able to question something that they don't believe in rather than being a standardized there's kid. A so there's, a, there's yeah. definitely a balance there yeah. as well. I want to I segue into where the idea of Jimmy Nutrition came, came from. And does he have a middle name? He does not. Not yet. I mean, uh, but maybe that's Jim Hallinan does, but not Jimmy <laughs> Nutrition. Uh, yeah. So I, I about five fish, five or six years ago, maybe I proposed th- a course in nutrition and kinesiology. We have electives and everything at our school. We like li- literally have like advanced placement pottery. We have everything, and there's nothing for people who want to get into the health or fitness uh, space except for phys ed, which you're not going to learn stuff in terms of real world career, whatever. So I proposed this class. It was approved. Kids enrolled. And then I had to write the curriculum. It was, I had like six months to write the curriculum. So I immediately enrolled in my grad, in a graduate program in health and exercise science with a focus in sport nutrition. And since now all the, the graduate programs are pretty accelerated and take multiple courses, seven, eight weeks long. I was able to get a Decent amount of coursework in that kind of guided me writing the curriculum and where I wanted to go with it. So wrote the curriculum, started teaching the course. The first half of the year, we focused on nutrition. Um, at that point, I was more into nutrition from training at a CrossFit gym, learning about nutrition myself, seeing about nutrition coaching from the owner of that gym, understanding a little bit of the idea of nutrition coaching, trying to teach these kids, you know, this is a career. It's still early in nutrition coaching. There's, it wasn't like a thing that people heard of. Every new personal trainer, but nobody understood or heard really what a nutrition coach was four or five years ago. So I'm telling them this could be a career. You really understand this stuff. You really learn this stuff. You really care about people and you want to make a difference. Like this can be a career. You can make money doing this. And Five months into teaching that, um, I started Jimmy Nutrition. And it was simply just, my name's Jim and Jimmy Neutron. You know, I was going to say, it's got to be Jimmy Neutron. Jimmy right? Neutron. Uh, bringing the science back to yeah. you know, nutrition. Love that. But it was just an easy to say. The worst thing about the name is that everybody calls me Jimmy now, where it's like, I go by Jim. Yeah. But it's fine. I'm used to it now. Um, so it was just simply that. Easy to remember, kind of catchy. At first, I was like, do I make, name it Jimmy Nutrition, like N-E-W, New Body, New You, Nutrition? And I was like, nah, everybody's going to spell it wrong. Whatever. So just <laughs> Jimmy Nutrition, that's the name. Um, and then, yeah, started doing, uh, just kind of showing them, hey, you can you can do this. And, uh, yeah, started doing seminars at gyms and then getting clients from that, from doing seminars. Um, and it just kind of grew from there. Yeah. So When you get in trouble, are you James Nutrition? I am James Robert. <laughs> James Robert Nutrition. James Robert Nutrition. <laughs> <laughs> so... When you're posting on Instagram and I'm following along, I love the um, – you have a con- clear, concise, consistent message with what you're doing, posting on a regular basis. And there's always – as you read through, it's always something that makes you think. Yeah. Right? So talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, getting into that space. So now you're, you know, developing a following online or on social media around it, but you're also working in a school. So yeah. there's that, that – that dichotomy of like, all right, what do I say to when? What do I not yeah. say? What's appropriate? What's not? Talk to us a little bit about that yeah. journey. So at the beginning, and my superintendent follows me, so sees the stuff. Uh, but at the beginning, I would be a little bit more censored with stuff I say. I still do a little bit, but I'm also at the point, fuck it. I'll just you know, say whatever yeah. I'm going to say. Like one of my posts was fuck the metaverse like a month or so I ago. I read that one. And then like, just oh, kind of explained my, yeah. my feelings uh, on why fuck the metaverse. Uh, so now I don't really censor myself too much. I'm not aggressively cursing or things like that, but sometimes I'm like, am I crossing a line with not just cursing, but like even the topics with everything that's going on with COVID and public yeah. schools and blah, blah, blah. But I'm just at this point, like, fuck it. <laughs> Whatever. I'm going to say the things that I'm, yeah. that I'm saying. And even in the midst of saying things that 
if it's I don't think any of this stuff's controversial, but if it's considered controversial, at least it's going to maybe make people think a little bit, um, question their belief system if they have a different viewpoint. I try to always explain things in that way. And most of my posts, as you can see, are mindset related uh, posts. It's not a lot of nutrition posts, even going back to the beginning, not a ton of nutrition posts. You know, nutrition is just a gateway to helping somebody change their lives as far as I'm concerned. And it's all mindset related when you're talking about people who are struggling with dieting. You get these some clients who, hey, they want to gain weight, they want to put on muscle or whatever. Performance athletes, it's a different thing. But the average person wants to lose weight there is a history. There is a reason they're eating that way. There's a reason that they yep. have difficulty with it. So there's a lot of conversation. It's definitely more counseling when I'm doing checking calls than just talking about macros and food quality and stuff like that. So that's those posts are always from either just thoughts that I have, um, just sitting there thinking, or a conversation I had with a client, or maybe just a, a different way of saying something that I might have read in a book in a more concise way. So, uh, so yeah, it's all mindset stuff you know i don't know if that answered your question it at did all. and <laughs> i look at nutrition i mean obviously it's the food that you're taking in but you're taking it to another level it's all the information you're taking in as well it's not just as we talked a lot about it too and it's about that input versus output and input yeah. is everything that you're consuming yeah. and you just talked about the phone and, and how we're receiving all this information um real quick before i get into one of the posts that you said you were going to post or thought about posting mm. you were um you were damn it <laughs> Um, your process for creating content, you know, we're working with someone right now and he's like, listen, you guys have a great message, but what you're doing is you're promoting guests on your, on your Instagram feed. Yeah. You know, you need to put your thoughts out there. You both have a lot to say, put that stuff out there. So what I love that you're doing is you're taking shit that you're either thinking about or that you're hearing from a client, you're working it through your own process and then posting it out. So do you have a, on Sundays I wake up, I do this, this, and this, and then I create content. And then on Wednesdays I post everything for the week. How do you go about doing that? So I use an app called Quotes Creator, which that's just where, like you type it in, it's the same format every time. You can change the way it looks. I just pick the black and, you know, whatever, uh, yellow stuff. Um, but I use that. So anytime anything pops in my head, I make that quote. And then I upload it to an app called Planoly. And then that's just where they all sit. And then usually the night before, I'm like, all right, I got to write my caption up for the post. And then I just schedule it for the next morning. So usually, there, sometimes there's nothing in the planally where I'm like, oh, I got to maybe think of something for tomorrow. Maybe I'll grab something like an old post from a year or two ago. Yeah. If I'm feeling really desperate every now and then, I skip a day. Um, but usually, yeah, there's like maybe a handful of quotes. I'm just picking like, all right, that's the one I'm going to uh, share tomorrow morning. Um, but yeah, I, I just, whatever. And the, it's funny because the ones that I'm thinking, should I post this or not blah, blah blah tend to get the best response and you hear other people say that kind of stuff a lot yep. but i've definitely experienced that where is this either dumb or is it like too much whatever and then you get this you know good response from it so i definitely don't hold back on whatever you want to say it's funny <laughs> i'm reading um the russell brunson's book expert secrets right yeah. now and he talks about we overcomplicate things especially if we're trying to get people to buy into what we're doing on social media or buy into our message and our he said you need to dumb it down it's almost like you're talking to an elementary school student like no disrespect but yeah. basically to anybody out there that's listening but it's it's one of those things where people like the clear concise easily digestible especially because our attention spans it's like a squirrel yeah looking for a nut it's that quick so we need to be able to grab someone's attention quickly and then once they hear what we're doing they're like okay let me dig a little bit deeper, and that's where you can put in the caption some more information yeah. about your own and I know, and Not everybody's going to read the caption, right. and I know I need to. I did it for a little bit. I take my caption, send it out as an email. For the people who like to read more stuff, I just haven't been doing that. I need to start doing the email thing more. Yeah, um, we don't do that either. Yeah, yeah we, we don't, don't do that. that, and that it's so funny that you're mentioning like how, you know, is this dumb? How does this, you know, how is this going to sound like before we got in here? I wanted to do just a video of myself talking about a topic, about food, actually, yeah. and I was like, all right, you know, it's going to be, I like to do them under a minute or under 30 seconds if I could make it really quick. And it took me an hour and a half yeah. to get that. And I sat there and it, literally I'll go through it and I'll be 30 seconds in and I'm like, fuck, 
fuck this so, god I'm so, this <laughs> i have done this so many times and i have to get back to doing video yeah um the other day i was like scrolling through like old reels videos or just igtv videos and i was like man there's some good shit there like i was kind of getting pumped up for my own <laughs> yeah. voice i was yeah. like okay let's go you know i gotta do that more but there was t there's been times where i'm sitting in the living room and i'm like i gotta go out to the garage and make a video yeah and i just go out and i just start videotaping myself talking and there's been plenty of times where i'm sitting there fuck what the fuck was i gonna say and i just keep it going keep yeah. taping just keep talking and then just cut it you mm -hmm. know instead of feeling like that pressure to yeah, that have perfect. it be the perfect one minute yeah you know but just do it and just talk yeah. and just keep the camera rolling and then just cut it afterwards. And it, it ends up being like more of a journal prompt for me than anything yeah. else. You know, yep. it's this like ability for me rambling. to rather, yeah, I'm just yep. going through Absolutely. it. And then what I want to do is take those clips of me fucking up and put them out there yes. just to be like, these are all the things that you didn't see. <laughs> I'll show you, know? you one afterwards where like, that was the beginning. And I was like, see that? See that? <laughs> so that? And then I, like I said, talk much. And then I finally like got <laughs> oh, to the so, point where I uh, said what I was trying to say, but yeah, I, yeah the same exact I thing. Love Especially if you have the captions on it and it looks oh, like yeah, you're so speaking it, like, you know, something yeah, that yeah. Jar Jar Binks talks right. out. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, so the post that you were talking about, uh, putting out and by the time this airs that you will have either done it or not done it so Correct. we'll see where we are um, tell us what the post that you were struggling with was because so it, it's totally off topic but there was uh, of what I'd normally talk about so that's why I didn't really necessarily want to post it but I had to write down just my thoughts on it uh, this whole toxic masculinity thing and I said toxic masculinity is the new feminism and then even in the quote I put, you have to read the caption to right. understand because like mm. people are going to read that and instantly get pissed off. Like, what are you talking about? And just in my mind, thinking about what has happened with some of these movements that start with maybe a good root. So feminism, empowering women who maybe feel trapped in this housewife mentality. They have to be a housewife. But there's women that had dreams outside of being a housewife, but they felt they had to be that. And, this, you know, nobody disagrees with equal rights, you know, for men and women. And nobody wants to stop somebody from pursuing their dreams, whether they're a man or a woman. But this feminism movement ended up causing a lot of women who are really happy being a housewife. That is what gives them fulfillment. And they want to do that to feel bad for that being their dream. You know, this is what I want to do. And now this movement of like, you have to be more, pursue your dreams. Like, well, this is my dream. It can't be your dream. And, and being made to feel bad. And then this toxic masculinity thing, which does not exist in terms of toxic masculinity, the definition, the description of what masculinity is, is nothing toxic. Nowhere in the description of masculinity does it say that you are, um, you know, an abuser, you're an asshole, you're rude, <laughs> you're aggressive, um, any of those types of things. But there are just toxic people who are masculine. So now this whole to toxic masculinity talk has led men to feel bad, some men, to feel bad for being a man, you know, and, and having masculine characteristics and maybe wanting to have a tribe of men around them and all that stuff that are good for us. Um, so that was just the only uh, comparison between the two, that this feminism move has made some women feel bad for enjoying <laughs> maybe being a stay-at-home wife and this toxic masculinity idea is making some men feel bad just for being a man so that was the post <laughs> i think it's a great post I and i know, think man. that I you it. don't even need i will to sell it to, to you read. for 499 dollars <laughs> and 97 cents if you put a seven at the end i know we have a we better chance for sales it's one of building men's <laughs> secrets but that i think regardless like you don't even need to like hey read the description like if you're if you're that triggered by it that you don't even read the description, uh, the description's and, not even gonna. Yeah, it's you're exactly. Still it's not, you're still gonna be freaking out, and if it elicits any emotion at all, that did its job, and then you can kind of let them unpack that however they want, and that yeah. post is gonna get exactly what you wanted out of it. You know, like. <laughs> well, I'm not looking for controversy. I'm right, not looking but, to piss people off, but yeah, to at least start the conversation. Yeah, it is funny to see somebody really struggle with that cognitive dissonance when they start to be confronted with something that they just feel so strongly about and don't even necessarily know why and then you start to bring points up uh, fuck you know what you're talking about yeah you're not, that and you're exactly the, the problem yeah, yeah. and then they just <laughs> like that and you you lost attack you on a totally different level that yeah. has nothing to do with the content that you're saying which yeah. is always funny yeah, it's interesting there is a whole space the manosphere or whatever right now where it's gone in such a direction that you know i i feel like there's there's this thing going on now like you feel that it needs to be the anti-feminism and or it needs to be anti people that are almost toxic in the way that they are feminists, like in, in that direction. So there are men like, fuck women. We don't need them. You know, we're going to stand by each other and we're going to treat women disrespectfully because that's who I am, the man. And I'm so I, I feel like it's swung so far in that other yeah. direction that there's 
ultimately just a fucking asshole. You Correct. Know, like tr- pretty much. Is yeah, what like it is a real man day. doesn't think that no. way. It's an insecure person Weak who man. happens to yes. be a man. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Weak so there's there's being. the there's the level of man that's so soft and passive and not able to stand their ground and be assertive and happy wife happy life thing which is the biggest fucking farce of all time Th- that's a very weak man and then also the you know like they think they need to puff out their chest and fuck everybody they gotta, else and they, yeah. they're equally as weak in the other direction yep yeah yep. start putting women down and making them feel like crap and that inherently makes them feel good about themselves you're just as weak as the person who puts the woman on the pedestal yes. you're the same person in my opinion yeah yeah, yeah. it's just you just use it in different ways yeah, a different outlet um, and so when we're talking about this tribe of, of men thing, I think that's the thing that we, that I know that I missed for a long time in my life during my marriage was this level of community feel. Um, I had f- friends in my community. It was, I don't want to say it was surface level. You know, I had some deep conversations with some friends, but it wasn't this level of, I knew that if the chips were down, this dude would grab a shovel and a bag of lime and he would meet me out in the field. Like we were yeah. ready to roll in that way. So the guys that I played baseball with in college, the I lost touch with a lot of these guys, and I'm watching you with the straw. Dude. I just was gonna say, this is gonna you're not you a real man people. unless you're drinking That's out of a right. straw. I am a paper comfortable straw too. with myself. Okay, just go ahead. continue. We're just gonna watch. We're gonna I mean, watch I love you that you're for turning a it around on go me ahead. in this direction. But can we hear? Can we hear it? <laughs> There it is. Mm. There it is. Yes, that's good water. So nice. I'm Margaret Joe McCullen. That's good. <laughs> when you think about this tribal sense, we we need to have men that will push us, that'll hold us accountable, that we can also go to and be like, listen, dude, I need some advice here. I fucked up, or what do you think about this? That's what we're missing right now. And I that's one of my favorite things about what we're doing here is creating that, creating that sense of of community feel with other men and yeah. and it's okay to fucking Talk about that shit. It's okay to fucking talk about the peanut butter in your back seat. It's okay, bro. It's, it's just okay. hard to do it. I know it's a problem. <laughs> I just chunky or creamy. I was just gonna know? say that, oh, you bastard. <laughs> it's it's creamy. Of it has course, to be obviously creamy. It spreads way better. And my dog's allergic to nuts. <laughs> That's not what I heard. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Hey, oh, I know. I just gave you guys a layup there. <laughs> oh, that's a layup. <laughs> All right, so Jimmy, tell us where Jim. I don't want to say Jimmy now. Uh, that's all right. So tell us where we can we can find you. How do we how do we reach out to you and follow along with what you're doing? Yeah, I mean everything I pretty much post is on uh, on Instagram at Jimmy Nutrition. Um, I do have a free Facebook group, which is called Jimmy Nutrition Camp. If you look up Jimmy Nutrition Camp, and I do want to grow that group more. I run challenges through there. I go live every Tuesday, uh, typically on topics that you know people in the group have expressed wanting to learn more about most people in there. I just did a poll. Why are you here? You know, education, accountability, motivation, whatever. It was kind of spread out, but a lot of people said education. So tonight when I go live, they're going to be upset when I explain to them the best way to learn is to do. Mm. So you can come here all the time and watch my videos, teaching things and explaining things. But until you start participating in the stuff that we do in this group, until you start putting these things into practice, you're not really learning. You're just pretending that you're learning. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going to confront them with that tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Action so. precedes motivation. Absolutely. I love it. Yeah. Bro, any final thoughts? Yeah, so we always ask our guests before they sign uh-huh. off, um, what would be one thing that you could give the Building Men audience that they could do starting tomorrow? Let's say, base it off of anything. You know, you work with them on nutrition, on mindset. What would be one thing that they can do tomorrow that can start to kind of kickstart their life off? I mean, there's a... a- a ton of things, which I know that you've talked about before, things that they can start doing uh, with drinking more water or whatever. So there's there's so many things. I mean, if it's just basically nutrition, stop drinking calories. You know, cut out drinking the calories. Start drinking water. You, you should be shooting for half your body weight in water each day in ounces. You weigh 200 pounds, 100 ounces of water. That could be one thing. But it, really pick a step. Everybody knows what to do. They know the stuff to do. They're just not doing it. Yeah. So if it's either picking that step that thing that you're going to do right now, we're just doing a 10 day, 30 minute walk challenge. I don't care how you get the 30 minutes in, um, 30 minutes at once, three, 10 minute walks, set a goal and meet that goal. And that's the only way you build confidence is showing up and meeting the goal that you've set for yourself. So everybody feels bad and insecure because they keep trying these things, but they don't actually do it. So knowing that, you know, what you should be doing, pick one of those things, set it a reasonable, attainable goal and follow through and actually do it. Um, if you're still struggling, to meet that goal on your own, you have to create accountability with it somehow, whether it's people in your life or hiring a coach. I mean, that's why there's coaches. I do think that coaches are going to be the future of, of, uh, 
whatever life America <laughs> wherever <laughs> um, whether it's nutrition coaching you know being a life coach being a business coach I do think that that is uh, the future and I think it's gonna be more normal for people to have coaches you know as we get more disconnected yeah. there's more of a need uh, for somebody and yeah you got to pay that person if you're not gonna <laughs> surround yourself with people um, in your life so yeah pick pick something follow through with it um, and give it time give it time before you pick the next thing don't just go all in everybody goes they try to do too much at once. And I always say, if you're not currently doing it, it's not too little. I think a lot of people think, really, I'm just going to walk. I'm just going to go for a walk. That's not going to do anything to change my life. I'm just going to read for 10 minutes. That's not going to do anything to change my life. Well, if you're not currently doing it, it's not too little. You know, So take the first step. That's good advice. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I think about the hiring a coach for me was one of the biggest moments. Going through and lifted program working with Mark England was a game changer for me just in the language we're using and then recognizing I need help with the business part of building that yeah. you know it wasn't something that came naturally to me it wasn't something that I talked about a lot it's funny I'll do a quick aside before we close out the episode um, I am working with men as a coach men that are in the realm of late 30s to late 40s time frame um, going through a separation or divorce they are struggling in some aspects of their life. Their father, that is like, so I'm, I built this avatar of a, the guy that I would, you know, typically work with. And so the coach that I'm working with said, okay, what are you doing to attract that person into your life? Like, what are you doing? And I was like, I, I don't know. I'm waiting for them to come to me. He's right. like, what's your favorite food? I'm like, I love steak. He's like, what you're fucking doing is you're walking out to the middle of a field and waiting for steak just to fucking come to your face. Like, come to yeah. And he's like, that's what, <laughs> enter your mouth. Enter your, like, that's what you're doing right now. You are not. So he, he We've was all helping, been there, me, you know? helping me. Usually there's it. not a steak that gets put yeah. in your mouth. <laughs> Sorry. Get to run by. <laughs> <laughs> so basically he's saying, like, you need to, to be in the spaces that are attracting those people. And it was one of those things. I knew that. I wasn't doing it, though. Either I yeah. inherently wasn't doing it. So having a coach working with a coach on, on that level, that accountability, it's different from therapy in a way. Having gone through, you know, going and sitting on a couch with a therapist, there's also this level like a daily check-in. Yeah. Like, hey, what are you doing right now? I'm working with a guy right now, so and I'm powerful. giving him a call every single day because of an event that he had, a traumatic event that he had, and I'm helping him through that. So it's a daily check-in thing. So having – you know, that space to help someone. So you're coaching people. I know, Anthony, you're working with individuals as well. Um, it's a very rewarding for me to go through that as, yeah. a, as per, a, a person helping other people. So to find Building Men is on Instagram is building.men. Our website is buildingmen.io, buildingmencoach at gmail.com. Um, right around the corner is the Hero's Journey. It's our four-day, three-night event in Lake Tahoe. Um, information is on our website. It's on our Instagram page. Reach out to us via DM if you need any further uh, information about that. Go a step further than you thought you can go. We'll see you next time on Build.